Hello everyone, this is John from Volgerkin Studios, and welcome back to our third person controller tutorial using Mechanum and Unity 3D. Now, before we get started, there's uh, two screw ups that I wanted to go ahead and fix uh, from the last video. Uh, one is the jump string, so under player input, you also want to add in a string for the jump input as well. And the second thing is, I said that we'd be working on the camera in this tutorial. Um, that's not accurate. We'll be working on our player character script in this tutorial. Um, so go ahead and open that up in Mono Develop, and we'll go ahead and get started on it. So for player character, this script is actually going to govern, or it's going to govern everything that has to do with our character, pretty much. Period. So uh, all of the components that we need to access, we'll do that all from player character. Any kind of database information that we need to access will be through player character. It's just, you can think of it more like a funnel. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to include our helper class. So up at the top, add a using statement and say using helper. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a summary as well. So you can copy that or read it if you need to. Pause the video if you need to. And because of the modular design that we're going for, uh, we'll go ahead and set up a list of components that we want to require. And by doing this, all we ever need to do is just add this player character script onto a character that we want to use this system, and it will require in all of the dependencies. So the first thing that we want to require is a network view, and that's so that we can make this uh, available for both multiplayer and for uh, and for single player games so we'll require in the network view um, we could use a rigid body and we could go uh, very deep into this system um, but for simplicity purposes and to get my point across I just want to use a character controller so we will use a we'll require in a character controller component um, if you're going to add the script to anything, it's probably already going to have an animator in it, but we don't ever want uh, anything without an animator to access the, or to be, to have the script, so we'll go ahead and require in the animator. And then we'll require in our other two scripts as well that we made, uh, the player camera and the player motor. Okay. Also, to give this uh, a little bit more ease of use, we're going to add component menu. And the game that I developed this for is for Action Punch Protocol, so I just put in app as the um, the parent file path. So it's add component menu, whatever you want it to be under, if you do want it to be in, uh, under anything, and then player character. Okay. And I'll show you what that looks like once we actually go to add this to our beta rig. Okay. So that's all that we need to include in that. We'll need a couple of private fields and properties. So I'll just copy these in here. Uh, we'll need a character controller, so make a new variable uh, of the character controller data type and call it whatever you want. Uh, same way with the animator and a runtime animator controller. Okay. And so we'll also need to set up some getters and setters. So we'll set one for the animator and it's not a problem that we use uh, the exact same spelling here because all we're saying is is that we want to create a new accessor of the animator type and then name it okay and so in here is whatever is going to access so we're going to access the animator variable alright so this particular you see I'm using this so this dot animator is this instance's animator okay uh, so there's that one, and we'll also need one for the character controller as well. So we'll put that in, and we'll also give it some comments. Again, just pause the video if you want to read these or if you want to copy these. And save that off. I'm sorry, I'm really bad about formatting, so <laughs> I'm doing that during the tutorial. My apologies. Okay, and now we want to add our awake function. 
So before the script starts, before we do anything, we want to set the animator component to be equal to this instance's animator component. So we use this .get component animator. Okay. Same thing with the character controller. And then in our start method, uh, first off, we want to make sure that the network view is not null. But if it is, if there is nothing in the network view, then we want to output a debug message. So I just put in an else statement here and tell uh, the user to add in the network controller or the network view can component. Now we also want to check if that uh, network view is does belong to this particular instance um, or if the network peer type is equal to disconnected. So that way it will only ever run if this instance is in the network or if it's not actually connected to a network. So we'll implement a singleton pattern by doing this. Okay. And then, if that's not the case, we just want to set the enable property to be false. So we'll disable this, this script. Okay? And we'll want to go ahead and get our animator controller from the resources uh, folder. So we'll say the animator controller, the runtime animator controller, uh, this data type here is equal to resources.load and then we access that by using the resource class from our helper script uh, so resource.animatorcontroller so that way we just have that instead of typing out a string and then we also want to typecast that as an animator controller okay then we actually want to set the animator to that controller so we'll say animator.runtimeController is equal to animator controller. And save that. And now I also just want to go ahead and set some uh, default values for our character controller because uh, we have a universal scale that we use for all of our players or for all of our characters. And it is a really good idea to, to go ahead and, like, if you use Blender, then always make your characters scale at uh, about two Blender units. And so that way it'll ensure that this works the same way across all platforms or across all your projects. I apologize about the dinging. That's uh, my computer telling me that it can't handle the graphics requirements. Uh, it's lying though, so no worries. So we'll set the center to be a new vector 3 and just bump the y axis up by 1 so that we have the center in the middle of the, um, of the player and we'll set the height to 1.8F so that it encapsulates the player in a sensible kind of way. Okay, and that does it for our player character. Or I put this in update. Actually, this is not supposed to be an update, so we'll just move all this into start. Because we don't want it to be called every frame. We're not actually even going to be using an update method in the script, so we'll get rid of that. And I'll leave that in there for now. Just save that off go back into unity and let it compile we don't have any errors okay and so that does it for our player character scripts and in the next part I will be working on the player camera system so uh, I'll see you then